Welcome back to the ultimate beginner's guide to satisfactory. In the last episode, we created a new game in the rocky desert and we set up all the basic production lines for iron, copper and concrete. We then finished the episode by sending off all the tier one milestones. This episode is going to be packed with crucial information you need to know at the beginning of your game, like how to automate your solid biofuel production, how to unlock alternate recipes, and which ones are good at the beginning of the game. We're also going to expand all of our production and finally send off all the tier two milestones. Do me a huge favor, Hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes in the series. So the first thing we're going to want to do today is unlock the obstacle clearing milestone. This will allow us to get the chainsaw and start cutting down some trees and that will significantly boost the amount of foliage that we receive and then we'll be able to start making some solid biofuel. So first we'll need to go grab all the stuff that we've already crafted and hopefully we'll have enough to send this milestone off. And while we'll do that we're just gonna pick up some more leaves and wood around because we're gonna need to top up our biomass burners before we go and cut down some trees. Grab these rods, we'll grab the screws. Now we're looking for 500 screws here, so we're still missing 40 or so, so we're just gonna go ahead and just come over here and grab some more leaves while they craft about 40 more here. And then we're gonna go back and grab those. And we'll send that milestone off. And after that, we're going to convert the leaves and wood into biomass. So we're going to head back to the hub. We'll send this off right now. Perfect. And then we're going to craft these leaves and wood into biomass. Now that we have the biomass crafted, we're just going to top up pretty much every single one of these biomass burners there you go so now we're gonna be good for a little bit long enough anyways so for us to do our basic exploration now before we do that however we need to craft an equipment workshop so we're gonna just put it right here for now this is just temporary we're gonna be deleting it in a little bit anyways and we're going to go look at what we need for the chainsaw. So for the chainsaw, we actually need more screws and we need five reinforced iron plates. So we should be able to craft all of that here. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll craft enough screws until we're able to do five reinforced iron plates. We'll do the five plates. And then now we're just going to craft until we have 160 screws. Now we're going to go here and craft our chainsaw. Now the chainsaw requires solid biofuel in order to function. So we're going to go down to our craft bench. If you're able to, I would try to craft as much as you can here. Somewhere around 40 to 50 solid biofuel if you're able to. But if you don't have enough biomass, just do what you can. Now before we head out, we're going to toss everything we don't really need into the storage bin over here. All right, so we'll put everything away except for about a stack of each one of the items we're producing that is not screws. It doesn't need to be a full stack. I would just make sure you got about, I don't know, like 100 concrete, 100 plates, and the other ones you don't really need that many. I'd say about 50 of each one of these, uh, but you want to make sure you have some. Now we're going to start by cutting down the trees that are near our hub. Because we're going to want to build foundations over here and we want to make sure that nothing is, our, is in our way. So we'll cut all the trees that are around here. I'm going to go cut these guys over here too. 
Now we're going to start heading towards this river that's behind here. And we're going to follow this river, cutting down trees as we go. We are going to need a lot of trees to be cut. So we're going to cut pretty much every single one that we see here on our way. And we just want to follow the river for a little bit. Now, as we're cutting trees down, we want to keep an eye out for power slugs. In our case, there's one right up here. So what we're going to do is go into our builder menu here and i'm going to add foundations and ramp to my hot bar we'll take out the ramp and i'm just gonna put it in zoop mode click it once and then bring the ramps down and then we can just climb the ramp and grab this slug now to dismantle this there's a couple things you can do you want to hit f to go into dismantle mode and by default you can delete one thing at a time now, if you hover over one of the things and hold control and just select everything you want to delete here and then delete things. But what if, and I'm going to add a couple items here to show what I mean. What if you go into dismantle, you hold control and then you select things and then you notice, oh, okay, I only want to delete the ramps. I didn't want to delete the lifts. Well, you can... Let go of the control button in this case, hover over the things you want to remove from the deletion and then just tap control and then move away here. And you'll notice that it deselected the item and then we can do that for each one of these. And then it no longer selects the lifts and then we'll be able to delete all the ramps. Something else you can do is actually before you dismantle anything, You'll go into dismantle mode. You'll hover over the one thing you actually want to be deleting. Then you'll hit the G button. And this will set a filter for the mass dismantle where it will only select things that match that filter. So you can see here now we're hovering over the lifts and they're not being selected because we have a filter on the ramps. So it ignores the lifts. These are a couple neat little tricks you can use in order to be more efficient when you're deleting things. So now we're just going to continue cutting wood and following this river. Now you need a lot of wood and leaves and it's best if you can minimize the amount of times you go out to cut trees in your playthrough because the more you go out to cut trees, the less you're building your factories, which is the whole point of this game. So we're going to continue. We're keeping an eye out on power slugs. And I'm going to keep going until we reach this platform in front of us here that has a more condensed amount of trees. When I get here, we'll have to be careful now because over here there are some poisonous plants. So they'll emit poison and you can get damaged by that poison. So we want to just avoid it. We'll head more to the right here. And what we want to do here is a couple things. For one, we have a yellow power slug over there we want to grab because we are going to need at least one yellow power slug in order to unlock the overclocking feature of the game. Something else we want to do here is grab a couple creature remains. Now, the ones we're looking for, though, are not the hogs. Although we do want to get the hog remains also. So we'll take care of this guy. But the one that I'm specifically looking for in this area is one that some of you might not like. And it's that guy right there. So there should be around four to five spiders in this area. And the way they, they work is they, they charge at you, they hit you, and then they run away. So they can be very annoying to deal with. But you just got to hit them twice and then they're gone. Now, you only technically need one. So if you grabbed one, you're good to go. You can leave the area. However, I'm going to go and keep cutting down the trees here because they're nice and condensed. And then if I run into more, then bonus, I can have more remains that we're going to need later on. I'm going to continue cutting these trees. And we're going to go and grab that yellow power slug. Now we're going to grab it. We're going to continue cutting down trees. We're going to avoid the poison. And we're going to keep heading east. Now, a little bit towards the east here, you'll notice another power slug. It's a blue one this time. 
and it's on this rock and it's being guarded by two hogs so we're gonna have to go and take care of those before we can grab that power slug there you go perfect we gotta be careful here because there is radiation. There's only one more thing I want to get here. Well, two. We want to start heading towards the waterfall. And on the way there, we're actually going to grab the raw quartz we see here. And we can use that to research in the MAM in a little bit. But the main thing we're looking for in this area is actually this. A crash site. Crash sites are how you unlock alternate recipes. And they also always have these loose items on the ground around them. And these are a great way to grab some items that you might need at the beginning of the game. That might take some time to craft. In our case, there's screws, wire, there seems to be circuit boards. Now this is a rough one. It has two flying crab hatchers. And they can be very deadly. So you want to take care of one and then back up, heal up, and then go and take care of the other. Did you know there's plans to add a crab boss to the game? Yeah, if you thought these guys were bad. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna grab the items that are laying down on the ground here. And then we're gonna go towards the drop pod. So this is what we're looking for. If you open it up, you'll notice that you can't open the door because this one requires that we feed it 30 megawatts of power. Now, all crash sites typically need some form of requirement in order to open. Some of them need power. Some of them need items to be fed. Some of them need both items and power. And there are some that don't require anything. You could just open them up. All right. So in our case here, we need power. So the easiest way to do that is by putting down a biomass burner and then we'll feed it some leaves and then we'll give it some power then we're gonna be able to open the door and grab the hard drive that's inside then we could just delete our biomass burner and then move on back to our hub and we're gonna grab the sulfur node too so that we can research that in the mam in a little bit so now that we're back here Let's place everything we don't need right now in the hub. And there you go. Now we're good to go. And that concludes our exploration. Now before we tackle the automation of the solid biofuel, we're going to plop down a MAM. Now a MAM requires five reinforced iron plates. So we're going to go and craft those. And now we'll be able to plop down the MAM. Now I'm just going to put it here because we're going to actually be deleting it. And what we do in the MAM here is we want to research the hard drive. Now before I do that, I'm going to talk to you about how hard drives and alternate recipes work. And this is a very crucial and important understanding that will shape the way you handle your playthrough so you notice i haven't unlocked anything else yet even though i could easily do this and the reason for this is alternate recipes on the wiki page for the hard drives we could see a table in here when you research a hard drive you'll be given three choices for an alternate recipe and you'll have to pick one to unlock the one that you want now the three recipes that will show up here will be from the available pool of alternate recipes that you still have not researched in order to be picked for a choice it needs to fulfill the unlocked by requirement here the first ones here do not need an unlocked by requirement which means out of the gate they'll be available to be put as one of these three choices but as you unlock more and more features in the game, you'll add more recipes into the pool of available alternate recipes that can be shown here. So this is why you'll want to make sure that you don't unlock things too quick if you plan on using alternate recipes. So in our case here, we are going to be looking for the god tier of starter recipes, the cast screw. This recipe allows you to go straight from iron iron ingots into screws. There are six alternate recipes that are available at the beginning of the game. And since there are three options that will show up, that gives us a 50% chance of getting our cast screws. 
Now, if we would have researched the part assembly that is in tier two, then you would have had two extra alternate recipe available in the pool of alternate recipes, which now means our cast crew is now part of eight total possible alternate recipes that can be in here, which means we now went from 50% chance to somewhere around 37% chance. Once you start the hard drive research here, the alternate recipes have been already picked for you. They are not part of the actual hard drive. They're only generated once you start the scan. If you save your file before you do the scan, you can then go ahead and do the scan here. And in 10 minutes, once you open it up again, if you don't find the cast screws, you could revert back your save and try again. Now we're going to hope that we don't have this problem. So while this is researching, what we could do is start deleting everything we've got here. We'll have to place down a storage container. And in here, we're going to add everything we don't need. And we're going to keep deleting everything in this area. That means all our biomass generators we already have. Now, that means our factories are not going to be running, but that's okay. We're not going to be spending too much time here. So what we want to do here is add a platform. Now, the platform we're going to add is going to be roughly 10 by 7 or so. So when dealing with foundations, there is something called a world grid. So if you hold control, you'll notice that we're snapping to this grid. So if you were to put these down here and then some more foundations somewhere else in the world on that world grid, you could theoretically build roads from one factory to the other and they would line up perfectly. What we want to do here, we're actually going to cover this rock a little bit, not fully because we don't want to go too high here. And then we're going to go 10 10 wide so one two three we're gonna go another six seven like so and then we're just gonna bring everything that far and we're gonna do 10 wide here like this six and seven so now we'll place back down our hub we want to place it so that the biomass burners are again on that side and we'll put it in the middle of these two foundations. Now, what you can do here, if because it's hard to tell where things are going, right? So if you press H, you can lock the hologram. This is a brand new feature. And then you can walk around and see if you need to move things. So here we just need three foundations behind the actual hub. So we can actually move the hub a little bit more. So what we can do here is use the arrow keys and tap the left hand side here and it'll move the build a bowl in one meter increments using the arrow keys. So this is perfect. We'll look again. We're not really centered in those foundations. So I'm actually going to hit it to the left. And now we're better centered. Although, oh, that's a good question. Do I want to center the biomass burners? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I do. We'll center the biomass burners. I think that's going to drive me less crazy. Now we are going to put down a total of four biomass burners over here. One in each one of these foundations. And then we need to give power to all these biomass burners. So we're going to place a pull down right in front for these two. And then we're going to bring a pull here. And give it to those two biomass burners. And then we're going to bring another pull right in the middle here. Give that one to here. And we're actually going to bring one pole right there because this will be the pole that'll feed our limestone nodes over there. And then from here, we're actually going to bring it here in case we want to expand our power this way. And we'll make sure our last biomass burner is attached to the power grid. Now, all we have to do is craft enough biomass until we have six stacks. 
So now that we have the six stacks, we're just going to add them to all of these biomass burners. And then we're going to feed power to our copper like so. And the last thing we need here is to feed power to our iron factory right now. So we're just going to bring a power line here. And then we're going to bring this one all the way here. And then um, since we're out of, well, we can add it to this, I guess. This is, this works. Now our factory is back up and running and we've got extra power and everything is good and Gucci. Now we just heard the ma'am come back and we're going to hope that it's a cast cruise because I'm not going to cheese anything in this playthrough. So if it's not the cast screws, I'm going to have to go hunt for another hard drive. Um, so let's put down a ma'am. We'll actually put this down here so it could stay here a little bit more permanently. Whoops. I'll add a, a little bit more platformage. Add this right here. And we're going to pray, pray that we get cast screws. Ah! Oh, yes! So we got the cast screws. Thank Lord. All right, it's time to automate our solid biofuel. To do that, we're going to place down a few containers. The first one on the right here, we want to face it so that the output is facing that way towards the hub. And then the other two will just face so that the output is facing away from the hub, just like so. Now, from these containers, we're going to build some constructors. But before that, we need to actually craft some reinforced iron plates. We're going to need a total of six here for this project. With these reinforced iron plates, we're going to put down some constructors. So the first one, or the first two, I should say, will be right in front of the respective storage bins here. And we'll belt some belts into each one of these constructors. Now in the first one, we'll put some leaves in the storage. And in the second one, we'll put all the wood that we have. And that'll feed these two machines. Now in this leaf constructor, we're gonna set the recipe for biomass from the leaves. And in the wood one, we'll do the wood biomass. From here, we're going to merge the output. And so we can merge it heading this way. And then we'll belt into that merger both constructors. Now to do a 90 degree turn here, once you have foundations, it's super easy. You want to line it up so you have the two lines. Then you go back two spaces, place it down, and then connect into wherever you want to go. And that will give you a perfect 90 degree angle. Now, next to the other constructors here, we're going to place another one. But this time, the output is facing towards the hub. We're going to place a belt from this constructor to that storage. And another belt from the merger to this constructor. Again, doing 90 degree turns. This one, we're going to set it to be doing solid biofuel. Now, all that we need to do here is give all three some power. So, in order to do that, we're going to grab a pole from here, bring it back here. We're going to add the first constructor to it. And then we're going to bring another pole around here and plug the other two just like this. And now we've done the automation of the solid biofuel. Perfect. So now we've got a nice little clean area where we've got automation and then we can just grab the solid biofuel from here and slap them in here whenever we're around. So now we can delete our storage bin that we put in here and we can put everything back into the storage bin right here. All right, so from here, we're going to go grab everything that we have crafted. And we're going to do a simple, quick expansion to our iron while we're in the area. Regardless if you have the cast screws or not, what we want to do here is actually add a merger on this iron rod line. And we'll take the line from this second iron rod 
constructor here and we'll just merge it into that one so that we double the amount of iron rods that we're putting in storage now we'll actually just go ahead and remove this whole section for the screws and what we could do is add two constructors set the first one to do cast screws we're gonna copy the recipe and then we're gonna add a smelter we're gonna line it up with that third constructor over here gonna add a splitter to this line and bring in the line to line it up with the smelter we'll go back a little bit and make a decent turn and from here we'll go into the constructor we'll add another splitter and belt to that other constructor now what we need to do is add another storage for the screw so we'll bring it roughly like so i kind of want to line it up with here if i'm able to yeah like so and then we'll bring a line from this cast screw constructor into the storage and add a merger to finally belt the other constructor into there so now this will send a hundred screws into there but not yet because we still have a mark one belt and it's is limited to 60 but once we unlock the logistics mark two we'll come by and upgrade this and we'll get the 100 screws per minute again we are technically able to feed more screws than that but we don't need them so there's no point in doing it just yet because again all of this will be dismantled in the near future so we'll bring power all the way here give that to the smelter and then we'll give power to both those constructors so as you can see that cast screws we're going straight from ingots into the screws we no longer have to do the iron rods recipe that that actually will significantly help with the planning of factories going forward so i do highly suggest you get that as quick as possible now if you weren't lucky to get it on the first try and you did not want to cheese it you can go to satisfactorycalculator.com look at the interactive map and you'll be able to see the location of all of the hard drives while i was editing this i just want to let you know that next episode we actually get another one so now our iron expansion is done now that we're done the iron factory we're gonna go and grab a couple more copper things now you can see here we're building uh way too many wires <laughs> but that's okay soon we'll feed them to an awesome sink but first we're gonna go and unlock the part assembly so from the part assembly we're gonna add everything before we send off part assembly in our case we're gonna go to resource sync bonus and program and we're gonna actually add everything there because we have that also and then we'll send both off now that we've unlocked the assembler what we'll want to do is actually come back to our iron production here and we're going to utilize this node right here so first we need to set up an equipment workshop we're going to craft a portable miner and from this we'll be able to now put down a miner on this node i'm just gonna rotate a little bit and we'll give it some power you can see here that now we've maxed out on that one so we'll add a new pole and we'll give it some power we're also going to place down a craft bench and craft 10 more reinforced iron plates and we're going to craft four rotors and we're actually going to craft more reinforced iron plates let's do roughly uh, 16 reinforced iron plates now we're not looking at getting the thing's perfect here we're just trying to get some reinforced iron plates let's place down our smelter we're going to bring a belt into here and then we'll put a second smelter we'll add a splitter here and send it into this other smelter or each one of these smelters we're going to go into the constructors in front of them the smelters will each do iron ingots now one of these will be doing cast screws and the other one will be doing iron plates then we'll send power this way and, and connect 
all four of these machines to the power grid. In front of these two constructors, we're gonna add an assembler somewhere like this. And then we'll belt into each entrance here. And then from here, we're gonna go into storage. We're gonna set this to be doing some reinforced iron plates. And finally, we're gonna give it some power. Now, because we're not sending the right amount of items into this machine, it won't be working at 100%. So by preloading the machine with items, it will actually help it work at 100%. But, you know, they'll slowly de deplete. So every once in a while, I'll just come and add some items in here. Now, I don't worry about it too much because this is all temporary. We're getting closer to being able to actually move everything into a factory but for that we need resources so that's why we're not doing it just yet gonna add a ramp here because this is how we're gonna get into our platform then we'll add another one over here so that we can come down here so let's take a look at the power now now we're getting low on biomass so what we can do now is we should have a good amount of solid biofuel so we'll grab the solid biofuel and we're gonna split it into stacks of 100 by right clicking on them and we're just gonna go to each one of these and change them out for a stack of solid biofuel and we'll do the same thing over here too So now the solid biofuel is more efficient, so it'll last longer than the biomass did. Then we can grab whatever biomass we had left. We'll preload the solid biofuel constructor here, and it'll start crafting way more solid biofuel faster. Now we're getting low on power though, our max capacity. So what we can do here is add a couple more biomass burners. So we're gonna add one here. And we're going to add one here. And then I'm going to add whatever solid biofuel I have left here to those two machines. For the copper expansion, we're going to need three constructors and two smelter. And most likely another miner. So we'll have to craft some reinforced iron plates. Actually ran out of iron stuff, so we're gonna go and get that real quick. While we're here, we might as well top up what we can. We'll place down our equipment workshop right next to the MAM for now, like this. And now we can craft a portable miner. And now we'll head over here and add a miner on the copper node. We need two smelters. So first we'll add one right about here and we'll add the other one right next to it. We'll add a belt in here, we'll add a splitter and then we'll belt into the other smelter. We'll give all of these some power. So we're going to add a new power pole right here. And then bring one here and add everything to the power. We'll set both of these to be doing copper ingots. We'll add three constructors. The first one will be lined up with the first smelter. Like so. And then we'll just add the other two next to it. We'll set all of these to be doing copper sheets. And then we'll add a belt from this smelter to this constructor. And we'll add a merger as close as we can to this belt to the smelter like this. And then we'll belt this other smelter to that merger. And then we'll add a splitter right here on that belt. And from that splitter, we'll belt into the other two constructors. 
All we have to do is add some power to all three of these. And then we'll add a container here. We're lining it up with the middle constructor. We'll belt it and we'll add a merger and belt the other ones into that merger. And there you go. Now we're crafting a total of 30 copper sheets per minute. So now our expansion for copper is done. That's beautiful. Now we'll go and check and see how much reinforced iron plates we have crafted already and see if we can't get 50. And while we're doing this, we're going to go and top up the screws and the plates here. Nice. So we have 62, which is going to be enough for the milestone. We're going to go ahead and send that off. And that's going to unlock our Mark II belts. And it will also unlock the stackable conveyor poles, which we're going to need real soon. So we're going to send this in. Launch the pod. And just like that, it pretty much completes the tier two milestones that we're going to be going after we're not going to be doing the jump pads anytime soon once we have 50 rotors left over we're going to uh, send it off here but for now we don't have to worry about it we got all the mandatory ones and we're good to go to get started on our last item for this episode the expansion to the concrete we'll first want to make sure our platform is big enough to accommodate so we're gonna expand just one more row there. And uh, so what we're trying to do is just try to keep about like a hallway around our, our factories. So we got one foundation worth on the outside here. We'll add one between our automated power and the limestone. So we are going to have one, two, three, four, five tiles worth of width for the concrete, which is going to be more than enough. Place down four constructors like this, where their outputs are facing towards the hub. And then we'll place a merger in front of the three on the left over here. And we'll make sure that that green arrow that signifies the output to the merger is facing on the left here. And we're just going to add them all like this. Then we're going to belt. Mark 1 belts is fine here. Between all the constructors and the mergers. And for this one, we just want to line it up with that merger. We'll go back to spots and then go into the merger. This will do a nice 90 degree turn here. And from here, we're gonna go into a storage container. We're gonna lock the hologram just to go see here. We're probably going to nudge it back down. Yeah, I think this works. Then we just have to belt into the storage and it's got a nice turn there. So we'll set these all to be doing concrete. So now we need to bring power. We'll bring it over here. So it's in the middle of the four constructors. And then we'll need to bring a pole in the middle of the first two constructors. And we'll give power to those. And then we'll bring another pole in the middle of the other two constructors. And we'll give those power. Now, right now, we have one line of limestone. But there is also two more nodes of limestone in that direction. So we'll bring them here for a total of three lines of 60 limestone. Now, one of those lines will come straight over here. And then it'll go into the constructor, the first constructor. Since it requires 45 per minute for this constructor, there'll be 15 left over and that will head into a merger that will be behind the second constructor here. Now the output for that merger, which is the green arrow, will have to be facing left towards that constructor and we'll belt into it. We'll also add a belt from the splitter into this merger. Both 
of the other lines will merge together and make a one line of 120. That'll be a Mark II line. The Mark II line will come all the way back to in front to this constructor over here into a splitter. So we'll make sure that the input comes on this side here. That's the orange arrow. So 120 will come into this splitter and then there'll be 75 left over. Now from that 75 coming here, it'll go into another splitter this time behind this constructor and 75 minus another 45 is going to leave us with 30 and these 30 are going to go into this merger along with these 15 that we had left over earlier to make another 45 and that 45 will go into this constructor. So now all these four constructors will be running at 100% efficiency with three lines of 60 coming in. So now all we have to do is bring the lines in and we'll also have to upgrade these belts, but we'll come get that later on. We don't need it right now. What we do need is actually more iron plates. So we'll go get the iron plates real quick and we'll check on the reinforced iron plates while we're there. We might as well. We're going to be belting a lot here, so we're going to grab quite a bit of iron plates. We'll also top up this with both plates and screws, and we'll grab whatever how many reinforced iron plates there are already crafted. So since we have 50, we might as well do the upgrade right now. So we'll, up, we'll go to the Mark II belts here. We'll upgrade this to a Mark II belt. And then we'll upgrade this section right here. To mark two belts and realistically we could do this one too but it won't really matter because we're taking in 60 60 it'll only matter if we run out of leaves and then this one will be providing the full 120 by itself now the other things that need to be marked two is going to be right here this one needs to be a mark two between the, the two splitters on the right and we'll be bringing in a mark two belt like that straight into this last splitter and now all we have to do is add a merger somewhere and merge those two lines coming in from over there into this line so now we're going to go and get the concrete so the first thing we want to do here is get rid of the old setup we're gonna get rid of it completely we don't need any of it right now we can even technically remove the miner because we are most likely going to replace it and we'll remove the storage. We will add a two meter ramp on this side and on this side over here, both going up. And from this one, we'll add four meter ramps going as far as that limestone node is. So from here, we'll bring the foundations down here. And then we'll finish them off by going over the node just like this. Then we'll add the miner back on top here like so. And then we'll add a lift. We'll make it face to the right hand side here and then add a mark one belt and we'll just bring it down the foundation here. now we didn't bring the power back all the way here so we'll have to bring it back with us and we'll do that by just bringing it back along this foundation line while we bring the belt back Now for this one, we can head straight in there. Because we set everything up, this will technically start working for us. We won't have to wait until we, we set up the other concrete here to get some concrete going. Actually, we're gonna remove this one right here and we'll just unify it. We'll have it come in, in here. I think that'll be the better option instead of having two ramps here. All right, so we're going to continue this foundation all the way over there, but we wanna make sure we bring in power with us. 
So we're going to grab this power. We'll bring it over here. And we're going to continue the foundations while bringing the power with us. Remember to cut down trees while we're out here. Because we are going to start needing more wood and leaves as we progress. So we might as well take care of it while we're doing other work. Alright, we're going to need to take care of this fly spawner now. And remove the chunk on top of this limestone. We'll actually continue the foundations. And then from here, we'll bring the foundations down. And here we'll have to use a 2 meter high foundation. Because a 4 meter high foundation will actually be too high. Let's put down an equipment workshop real quick and craft two portable miners. Then we can place a miner down like so. We'll be able to give it some power and then we have that one set up. And now we can go get the other one. So we'll bring the power over here. Ah, see, now we ran out of solid biofuel. We'll have to go and fix that in a second. Then we'll turn this way and start heading towards this node real quick. And then we'll do the same thing here. We're going to bring it down. Take the chunk off. And then we'll set up two meter foundations. Or at least the first one. Then after that you can you can go back to four meter if you want. For it to be more aesthetically pleasing. Because two meters might not cover the whole ground here. And then we'll add a miner on top. Just like so. And we'll give it some power. And then we'll do a lift so we could build a belt like so. Now this belt will want to place somewhere around here. And then turn it this way. And we'll have it come to where it lines up with the miner over here. And from here we can do two things. We can either run two belts all the way down. Or we could merge them. So for now, we'll just run two belts here. But before we run the second belt, we're actually going to place down some stackable conveyor poles. So for this one, we'll place it right around here. And then we'll belt underneath it. And then what we can do here is we'll extend the bottom belt. And then add the stackable pole on the outsides like this. And then you can... Then proceed to add the belt, like so. Now you could just stack them on these poles instead of putting one on the ground, but I, I like to see one on the ground rather than two belts high. I don't know why, I just find it nicer looking, but that's just a preference. So again, we'll do that. We'll place the stackable pole, and then we'll belt... from here to there and we're going to continue now we'll merge it right here so we won't go too far we'll actually go up to here we'll add a stackable pole bring that one to here and then we'll add a merger so the merger will just line it up with the first belt and we'll add a belt going into it the other one we can add a lift facing it like this and then go into the lift. Now, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it works. We'll actually have to move this uh, line here. It's going to be in the way of connecting that belt. So we'll just go one notch further and then we'll connect over there like so. Then we're going to add a Mark II belt from this merger. We're going to move it so that it comes down as close to the edge of the foundation as possible to line up with this belt right here. Now we have to fix the power. So let's work on that real quick. We're going to grab the solid biofuel we've created so far. 
and we're just going to add a stack to each one of these. And now if we turn the power back on, we should be good. So now that the power is fixed, we got the one node coming in. And we'll just set up the second node here. We'll line it up roughly with that stack conveyor pole here. And then we'll set it to go like this for now. Now I'll be uploading this save onto my Patreon. And I also want to thank all the Patreons that have supported me. This is what allows me to do series like this and keep going. I do appreciate every single one of you. And don't forget to like the video if you found it useful and subscribe and turn on those notifications if you want to be notified for future videos.